next. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, Chairman Powell, thanks so much for appearing before the committee today. Um, I have two questions. The first one centers on energy. Uh, as you know, demand has dropped for energy since the pandemic started, but economists are projecting greater demand later this year and into 2022, even while production declines uh, under the current administration's actions to restrict oil, gas, and coal development. Uh, my question is this, are inflationary risks weighted to the upside or downside if a demand shock occurs and reduced production cannot keep up? The downside for a long time, for a long time. Um, the, the situation you described, um, let's, let's say hypothetically that it does uh, push up uh, energy prices in the near term. That would, that would move through headline inflation, but it, it wouldn't necessarily, it would raise prices. It wouldn't necessarily change the rate of underlying inflation. Would, would a balanced energy approach, more balanced than we're looking at right now, be appropriate until the supply demand curve returns to normal? I, um, I you know, don't really, we don't really take positions on energy supply. Those are really issues for, for our elected representatives, notably including you. And I know you're an expert in, in the energy space. Well, I'll switch my questions then to innovative payment instruments. Uh, Fed now and other instruments like stable coins and central bank digital currencies have the potential for much higher monetary velocities. So how will this impact the monetary transmission mechanism and collateral availability in the markets? Well, um, we don't think that uh, we don't think they will have much of an effect on monetary transmission, actually. Uh, we've had, you know, tremendous amount of, uh, of payment sector innovation for, for a long time, really. And monetary policy transmission continues to be about what it is. We change interest rates and, uh, and that works its way through the economy and that supports economic activity or restrains it depending on, on where interest rates are. So we don't actually think there is gonna be a tight connection between you know, the Fed now is in the stable coins uh, uh, of the world. And, and I would agree with you, it's important to have um, uh, collateral. And, you know, what we see in the markets is, is, is far from a shortage of collateral. There seems to be ample collateral if you, if you just look at the rates that are being paid. Could higher velocities from innovative payment instruments lead to a refocusing of the monetary transmission mechanism away from the securities markets and towards a more of a bank focused transmission mechanism based on demand deposits again we don't we don't see the the, the premises um, that might be right we, we don't actually think though that there's much reason or evidence to expect showing that that uh, these uh, innovations will have much of an effect on velocity or on transmission for that matter. So we, we can typically should talk about this online. It's a very interesting question, actually. But we don't, we don't really see the, the premise, but um, I'd love to hear more. I'll look forward to those conversations. Uh, one more question. Do we need a central counterparty for the clearing of treasuries? Interesting question. And that's, that's a proposal. We're doing a lot of uh, thinking these days, along with colleagues from other agencies, about the structure of the Treasury market, given what happened at, during the acute phase of the pandemic when there was so much selling pressure and, and there wasn't the capacity to handle it. And one way to do that would be to have central clearing. It's, um, it certainly has benefits, and I've been a big fan of central clearing in other parts of the economy. It's something that, that we're looking at. Uh, I don't know that it'll wind up um, being part of the solution, but it's certainly worth looking into. It's a, Again, another very interesting uh, analysis and question. Well, thank you. Uh, Senator Cinema, who previously spoke, and I have founded a financial innovations caucus uh, in the Senate. And these are some of the things that we want to explore, plus many other things. So we will look forward to uh, addressing some of these questions through the financial innovations caucus. 
uh, and through this committee. So thank you so much, Chairman Powell, for uh, being with us today and for your insights. I yield back. Thank you, Senator.